To round out the final matchup in the group stage, two of the most coveted Asian teams square off to lock in the seeding for the quarterfinal stage. Both of these teams are the strongest in their respective region right now, and this is an extremely important matchup to dictate honestly a lot of the matchups that will happen in the quarterfinals. In this case, every step in draft is as important as ever, so both teams will have high investment in being able to get good reads on each other's composition. I wanted to use this opportunity to provide some insight into how such important drafts like this are broken down, and how people like us at home can better understand the decisions they go through. As always, if you enjoy content like this, feel free to drop a sub to support the channel. Let's hop in the draft. Starting with the first phase bans, this game kicks off with Genji on blue side. Their bans are pretty specific here, I'd say, with Lissandra, Fiora, and Jax getting banned out. On the other hand, RNG ban out a little more standard to prep up against the B1 here, with bans on Yumi, Maokai, and Aatrox. Genji's bans are pretty interesting because this means to me that they have determined that they really need to shut down Breathe side laning in these fights. What's also interesting is that out of the bans, Genji actually go for what I would like to consider a pretty raw Silas pick out of the gate. There's quite a few things on the table here like Azir, Sichuani, Caitlyn, and the Lucian Nami combo are all available. So just picking Silas straight up in the B1 like this is a very interesting take. It might be that Genji just prioritizes a certain style of play within the game, and as long as that condition is fulfilled, then we're good. Now realizing the dynamic that Genji wants to go for, they kind of just say alright and take pyro picks in both Sejuani and the Nami portion of the Lucian Nami. Genji responds in the B2B3 with Athelios and Lulu, while RG completes the bot lane pairing for R3, and we've got ourselves a very quick first phase. There's not too much that's interesting here if we exclude the Silas pick right now, except for the fact that Genji also signed up for what I would consider a losing matchup on that bottom side here. Genji pretty much paid a pretty hefty tax in order to secure that Silas B1 here. Into phase 2 bans, Genji's comp is mainly defined as a weaker bottom side and using that Silas pick to basically create interesting advantages around the map. RNG's comp is also super standard, but I'd say their comp really reveals nothing about how they want to play the game, except for the fact that this Sejuani is more than likely investing resources into that bottom side. Being on blue, Genji will also have a pretty tough time securing a top side to play through, so RNG make that even harder by banning on champions that could potentially stabilize or force advantages. Renekton and Orn are the bans here. Genji surprisingly ban out Rise, which has to be a tactic pick from scrims that RNG causes problems with, and the GP, which is probably a small signal that Genji wants to play a tank on the top side. For their R4, I would have thought that RNG would pick mid here in order to maintain their flex pick with Sejuani. From here, you can just then slot in Sejuani wherever you feel like it will fit best into your composition at that point, whether that's in top or in jungle, and you're pretty much set up with a pretty powerful R5 to round out your composition no matter what. Instead, they actually pick Viego here, which means to me that they actually value this pick more than flexibility for whatever reason. It's technically valid because maybe they also want to prevent Gen G from getting this pick, but even I don't buy it. Genji ran out with the forward combo here in Vi Camille, giving them a good matchup in the newly revealed top side, as well as allowing them to negate the mobility of Lucian. RNG round out their R5 with Galio, actually, which is a matchup that's very oriented around the early game, but it's also a very RNG thing to pick in this situation. Early game chaos is literally what this team is all about, so that's what they're banking on here. I also think this is a very risky move by RNG for a matchup like this, but to me this just emphasizes how much they're banking on their bottom lane to succeed here. Honestly, it's possible that the Silas B1 here is a hedge pick to disincentivize certain picks like this from RNG since this matchup gets so Silas favored as time passes, so with that context, it opens up new possibilities like this. While Gen G volunteered into a very weak matchup in the Aphelios Lulu in exchange, they honestly got a lot back in the second phase of bans. Both teams definitely have strong sides to play through, and although they have both have taken big risks to play towards their strengths, there's a lot of very high level logic that's going into these drafts, and this is what I'd like to see. Overall, I honestly rate this draft 50-50. As always though, I hope this analysis was insightful to you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay fresh. Say, don't you